Accounting Superstars. Glad you're here. Welcome to the Accounting Superstar channel. This is the place to learn accounting. What I've been doing is I've been making a series of videos that are real basic and simple, easy to understand, the big picture, help you understand what's going on. So that way when you move on in accounting, you'll know why some of the, the more detailed things are, are done the way they are. So what, we're, what we have here is uh, we're doing the financial statements and the accounting equation for Fred's Snowblower Service. And what I did is I put on dates and the dates are really, really important. So uh, the way we're starting out here is I've got January for the month of January. So we're going to do transactions for January. And then scooting down the page, I'm gonna show you guys how we transitioned to the next month. So here's February. So what we'll do is we'll just do some transactions for February and process them and do the financial statements for February. And you can see how the uh, leap is made from January to February. So here we go. So this shouldn't take long. I'm going to go rather rapidly and um, and I probably won't explain things in grand detail. But if, if I'm going a little too fast for you, if you don't understand some things, I made some prior videos on this where I do go a lot slower and explain things more. So here we go. So let's say Fred here is starting his snowblower business. He has not operated this business at all. He's starting it up here in January at the beginning of January, 2000 and whatever. Fred invests $10,000 into his business. So here we go, and I'm going to put that under equity. And I've got written right next to it here, this is an investment, an owner investment. Next, Fred needs to borrow some money. So Fred goes to the bank and he borrows $50,000. And this is money that Fred owes, he has to pay it back. It's a bill, it's a liability. Now Fred, um, he doesn't take long to where customers are coming in and he sells a brand new snowblower and he sells it for $1,500. This is money coming in. And so we're going to put it over here under equity and it'll be revenue, $1,500. So revenue, revenue is money coming in from doing his job. Cost of the snowblower. Now this is the cost of the snowblower that was sold and it's an expense and I'm going to put this as a negative $1,000. So this snowblower cost Fred $1,000. He turned around and sold it for $1,500. And so I'll put it here under equity, negative $1,000. And folks, you gotta make sure that your accounting equation is balancing. Uh, I've got a negative 1,000 here on the left, a negative $1,000 on the right, and it balances. And if we look at the totals, we're in balance here. 60500 on the left. And if you add these two up, $60,500 on the right. So uh, just to repeat, revenue is money coming in from doing your job. Expenses, that's money going out from doing your job. Disco lessons. Fred loves to dance. And uh, one night uh, he decides to take disco lessons and he pulls some money out of his business checking account to for disco lessons. And the disco lessons are $25. So Fred pulls out $25. Now this is a personal withdrawal. It's money coming out, not from doing his job, but for personal reasons. So we can't call it an expense. An expense is money coming out from doing your job. A withdrawal is money going out for personal reasons. Finally, Fred's paying the electric bill. Let's say the electric bill is $100. And that's an expense. It's a cost of doing business. So it's money going out from doing his job. His job is to run that uh, snowblower shop. So let's see if our accounting equation balances because if it doesn't balance, there is no point in going on because it will not fix itself. It will not make itself better, it doesn't self-correct, we have to make sure it balances. So we have 60,375 on the left, and if we add the liabilities and equity together, we've got 60,375 on the right. So let's go down to the financial statements. Now folks, I've dated these financial statements. The income statement is 
dated the month ending January 31st, 2000 and whatever. So what this means is we're looking at, at the revenue for the entire month. So if we look under equity here, we have one item here that was revenue when he sold that snowblower. So we have $1,500 of revenue. And we subtract out the expenses. The expenses were $1,000 for the cost of that snowblower. And he paid the electri electricity bill. So Fred paid the electricity bill. So he has expenses of $1,100. So folks, to find his net income, all I'm going to do is sum this up and see what we get. So here we go. So Fred did well his very first month. He made a profit of $400. So the, this is for the whole month of January. The date for the changes in equity is similar to the income statement. It's the month ending January 31st. So it's a time period. All right, beginning equity, beginning equity. Now Fred just started this business right here in January. So his equity is zero right at the very start, but he made an owner investment of $10,000. And how do I know that? It says so right up here under his um, accounting equation. Net income, net income. I highlighted it in yellow so you know that these two numbers are related. We're just going to take the 400 and pull it over here to the changes in equity. So $400. And owner withdraws. Fred withdrew $25 for disco lessons. So minus 25. And what we have here for ending equity, we'll just sum it up and see what we get. So we have 10,375. And look at this, folks. It matches our accounting equation. The total for equity is 10,375. The balance sheet is a reflection of the accounting equation. That's all it is. The accounting equation has assets, liabilities, and equity. The balance sheet has assets, liabilities, and equity. That's all it is. So total assets. 60,375 if you're wondering where I got that it's the total under assets liabilities $50,000 and equity I highlighted it in blue so that way you can see that we're going to pull this number over here from the changes in equity and just put it here in equity uh, on the balance sheet 10,375 lastly let's make sure that the balance sheet balances so let's total this up so totaling up the liabilities and equity, we get 60,375, which matches the assets. And it also matches our accounting equation. This is all good. Now folks, here's where the lesson for today is. We're going to move down and do the month of February. It's real easy, super easy. We're done with January. So moving down here to February, here's all that we're going to do. For our accounting equation, we're simply going to move the ending balances down to February's beginning balances. So in other words, the ending balance in January becomes the beginning balance in February. For assets, that'd be 60,375. For liabilities, it'd be 50,000. For equity, it would be 10,375. Now at this point, it's a real good idea to double check, make sure that you transfer the numbers right, because if you start out on the wrong foot, it won't balance, it won't work, and you'll be wondering why. So let's see here, on the left-hand side, we have 60,375. On the right-hand side, we have liabilities of 50,000, equity of 10,375. Those add up and they equal the left side of 60,375, so it all works. So coming down the list here, let's do some February transactions. Now we're done with January, we're completely done. So we don't have to worry about anything that we did back there in January. So here we go, folks. So Fred gets another customer. He fixes a snowblower and he charges $400 for that, to fix that snowblower. Now this is revenue, this is money coming in from doing his job. And Fred pays his worker, pays his worker $100. Now, having a worker, that's a cost to doing your job, so it's an expense. Fred sells another snowblower. He sells another snowblower, just like the one in January, for $1,500. And that's money coming in from doing his job, $1,500 revenue. 
And the cost of that snowblower, since it was an identical snowblower to the one he sold in January, that's this snowblower also cost him $1,000. There we go. We're going to call that an expense, minus $1,000. Lottery tickets. Poor Fred, he plays the lottery. He's not very lucky. He never wins, but he spends money on lottery tickets. Let's say he spent $200 on lottery tickets. Now folks, Fred is not in the business of buying lottery tickets. That's not his job. That's not what he does. He sells and fixes snowblowers. So this, these lottery tickets are a personal withdrawal. So I'm going to put here minus 200 bucks. And Fred owes taxes. Fred owes $300. So $300 right here. It's a liability when you owe money. It's a liability, and Fred owes money to the government. Unfortunately, owing money to the government, that's a cost of doing business. So I'm going to put it here as an expense. So check this out. Let's see if the accounting equation balances in regard to taxes. I've got zero over here on the left under assets. I'm going to write a zero so it stands out. And I've got a positive 300 and a negative 300, while the 300s cancel each other out. So the left-hand side equals zero, the right-hand side equals zero, and all is good. Let's make sure the grand totals balance. So on the left, we have total assets of 60,975. And if we add up the liabilities and the equity, I think you can see that it also adds up to 60,975 and it's important to check that because if it does not balance, don't go on, it's not going to work. So coming down to the income statement, again the date is really important. I abbreviated it here and I said month ending February 28th. So this is for the entire month of February. Now since it's for February, we don't care what happened back in January. So here's what we do, is we simply write here. $400 of revenue, or I'm sorry, we've got $400 of revenue and $1,500 of revenue for a grand total of $1,900 of revenue. Expenses, he had $100 up here for the worker, $1,000 for the cost of the snowblower that he sold, and $300 for taxes. I believe that all adds up to $1,400. So minus $1,400. There we go. Let's see what his profit was. See if he made a profit. All we got to do is sum this up. And it looks like Fred here made a profit of $500. Going over here to changes in equity. The beginning equity. Now here we have to be careful. The beginning equity is not zero. We're doing the month of February. And at the beginning of February, the equity was 10375 So I'm going to put 10375 so backing up here, where'd we get that 10,375? That was the ending equity of January. And you know what folks? This ending equity in February will become the beginning equity in March. It just carries over. Owner investments. Now during the month of February, Fred did not make any owner investments, not a, not a bit. So I'm gonna put zero. Now, I know he made an owner investment back in January, but that was January, and we already took care of that. Net income. Net income, all we're going to do is transfer $500 over here to net income. That's all that happens. Owner withdraws for the lottery tickets, $200. So I'm going to put here a minus $200. And let's see what the ending owner's equity is. Let's total it all up and see what we get. 10,675 and guess what ladies and gentlemen it matches our total here for under equity so lastly is the balance sheet and the date on the balance sheet is different than the income statement and it's different than changes in equity it's as of February 28th 2000 and whatever and that's because the balance sheet just reflects a moment in time it's not a continuous thing like the income statement. The income statement is the entire month of February. The balance sheet is as of the end of the month of February. That's all it is. It's like taking a picture instead of a movie. So total assets, total assets here are 60,975. 
So there we go. Where'd I get that number? Right over here. Total assets, 60,975. And by the way, I want to uh, make it clear that this total includes all the numbers in the column. And this total of liability includes all the numbers in the column. Don't leave off the beginning balances. Liabilities. Liabilities is $50,300. And the equity, the equity is 10675 so there we go. I'm going to add it up, see if it all balances out. There we are. We're looking good at total assets, 60975 Total liabilities and equity, 60975 It all matches the accounting equation. All is good. So folks, we learned two things today. One thing is, is that the balances at the end of one month become the beginning balances the next month. So let's see if there we go. So here's January. These ending January balances, those became the beginning February balances. There they are. We just transferred them down. And these ending February balances are going to become March's beginning balances. Now, I left a lot of details out of the accounting cycle here, but that's okay. I'm trying to give you guys the basic idea. And the next thing that we learned here today is that the dates are important. It's really important that you date the income statement properly and the changes in equity properly and the balance sheet properly. That's something very, very important. So I hope you learned a thing or two and I um, hope you like this. I hope to make uh, a lot more videos for me. Let me know what videos you want to see, what uh, topics are giving you trouble. I've been teaching accounting here for oh over 30 years. I just counted it up. Just let me know what you want to see and I'll make some more videos for you. So let's call it a day here, folks, and over and out. Bye now.